Hello everybody, this is Leonard Pitts. Welcome to my office. I just wanted to spend a few moments talking about this piece that I just filed for the Miami Herald on African American history. And I guess the first thing I need to say is that I've been writing for a long time about efforts to diminish uh, or reframe uh, African American history. As far back as 1998, I did a piece on a um, community college in North Carolina where they were teaching that enslaved Africans were happy in their enslavement. I did a piece in 2014 about a uh, school district in Colorado where the students were protesting because uh, the edict had come down from the school board that the school district was only to teach positive aspects of American history. And we know what aspect they consider to be not positive. So, you know, this, this discomfort that we seem to see with African American history has been going on for a long time. But with that said, I have to say this, I have never in my life seen or even imagined anything like what we've seen uh, the last year or so with regard to, to the teaching of African American history. According to the Brookings Institute, 29 states, that's well over half the country, have now either passed laws or are considering passing laws to restrict or essentially to ban the teaching of, of African American history. Uh, I think about that and I think about how we used to hear uh, 20 more years ago, we used to hear these uh, stories about so-called Holocaust deniers, people who contended that or who claimed that the Holocaust did not happen, that six million Jews and five million other people were not fed into the into the Nazi murder machine uh, back during the Second World War. Uh, they, they'd say this uh, in spite of the physical evidence of the, uh, the death camp still existing, along with the crematoria in the death camps. They'd say this despite the physical evidence of human beings with, with numbers tattooed on their, on their forearms. They, they'd still say this. And I used to always wonder, what was the intellectual process, assuming that there was an intellectual process, but what was the intellectual process? What was it that brought people to this kind of insanity, this kind of, of disconnect from historical reality? Uh, it, was, it, it was a thing that always stumped and amazed me, and I find myself stumped and amazed in, in a very similar sense with what's going on in this country. Not that we are seeing people deny the reality of African American history yet. But what we are seeing is something related and, and, and almost as bad. We are seeing people deny the weight of African American history, deny the importance of African American history, uh, deny the reality of African American history in the sense of denying that it is something that, that school children ought to be, ought to be taught. Uh, I find that a, an astonishing development, particularly in an era uh, of, of creeping fascism, like the era that we live in now, in, in such an era to have the power of the state come down and say that that this history cannot be taught is really a, a troubling thing. I'm reminded of a, of a quote in the piece uh, that I just wrote, uh, a quote from Dr. Uh, Donald Spivey of the University of Miami uh, that I love so much, I really wish I had said it myself. Uh, but he's, he invoked the old saying about speaking truth to power. And he said that what we are seeing with all these governors and legislators and school boards in these 29 states is not speaking truth to power, but people speaking power to truth. In other words, using the raw brute force of, of legislative uh, uh, control and racial majority to impose silence on this one troublesome aspect of history. And I don't know if you can imagine if you're not black or, may, or maybe you can, what a profound insult that is uh, to, to, to be told that your history, that the things that you went through are, are something that, that cannot be talked about or something that, are not, that, 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 that apparently is not important enough uh, or significant enough that, that children ought to learn about it. Your passages, pretty much alone among, among passages uh, of American history, because we don't see these kinds of restrictions on women's history or on Irish history or on uh, any, any other history that comes to mind off the top of my head. But these kind of restrictions seem to be solely the province of teaching uh, of African-American history, or mainly the province, I should say, of teaching African-American history. That is a profound insult. I, I keep coming back to uh, the idea that a lot of this boils down to the fact that some of us are embarrassed by the role in African-American history of people who look like them. Uh, now, let's make no mistake. Many of the, you know, the, the heroes, if you look through African-American history, you'll find many white 
heroes, many men and women of great conscience and conviction who risked and lost, risked everything and even lost their lives uh, for, for the cause of African-American freedom. So there are a great many African -Amer white, white, white heroes of African-American history. But by the same token, if you look at that history, you will find inevitably that most of the villains are going to be white. That's just, that's just the fact of history. That's just the way it is. And I think there were a lot of white folks, that's a, little, that's a difficult thing to deal with. That's a heavy lift for them to deal with uh, intellectually and emotionally. I think that, and I think that as a result, they've chosen the idea uh, that they don't, that they would rather have willful ignorance. Rather than have these things discussed at their dinner table, they will make it so that they can't be discussed. They will, they will choose the path of willful ignorance because they are embarrassed by the deeds and misdeeds, the sayings of, of white people 20, 30, 40, 60, 100 years from now. And I've always wanted to ask one of them, okay, if you're embarrassed by what those folks did back then, how do you think white folks 20, 30, 60, you know, 100 years from now are going to look back at what you're doing right now in, in, in essentially abolishing this history? We are all posing for our portraits in history. We are all sitting here doing things that one day history will judge. And I'm here to tell you that 20, 30, 40, 60, 100 years from now, when people look back on what you're doing right now, the portrait is not going to be flattering. They are going to be embarrassed of you. That's just a thought. Thanks for your time. Thanks for listening.